room. We're we're at the Will Smith's Boom Boom Room. It's a multi-million dollar facility, and I noticed some like uh, improvised sound treatment out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, in, in this room, because uh, you know a lot of people tend to like the mic facing the you know the booth. They want to see, and this is what they want to record. Mm -hmm. So of course, you know, it's what they want, but you still have to be able to get the best sound. So when I walked in the room, I was hearing something like. I don't have an effect on the vocal, but I'm hearing effect coming through. Mm -hmm. I walk in a room, I'm clapping my hands, and I hear a reflection coming off the glass, and it's pinging right back. So, so that's why you put the pillows around Yeah, I took pillows the and just put pillows up there, and it, and it killed it. I mean, sometimes it's a simple thing, uh, sometimes it's a mic placement. On the pillows, do you prefer uh, foam or feather? Uh, usually feather. <laughs> feather, I think the feather is the feather, yeah, it's a little bit better sound quality. Yeah, and, 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 that's a, and, uh, that's a trade secret right there. Yeah, and, and no, no geese were killed in the filming of this <laughs> ITL segment. I'd like to make sure we, we clarify that. Right. Windscreens. Do you use windscreens? Yes, definitely. And I know a lot of Project Studio guys always have this problem where you set the mic up, you have a windscreen a nice distance away, First thing you notice does is put it on top of that mic and yeah. get on top of the mic. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's a lot of artists have a lot of discipline. The veterans, you know, they know how to work a mic. So yeah. you're like, wow, I can set it one thing and they and I get the perfect sound. Yeah, because they're working the mic. But yeah, yeah you have to work with a lot. How of How do you guys artists. deal with an artist is like jumping around and dancing and moving around? You just like I mean, duct tape them to the microphone. Well, I mean, <laughs> after a while they get it. I'm like, listen, when they come in the room and they hear what it sounds like, I'm like, listen, if you're not in front of the mic. You know, I can change the pattern on the mic, but I'm changing my sound, too. Dude, you mentioned that the, the only EQing you do is basically roll off a little bottom end. What's your EQ of choice for that? I mean, going to tape, of course, the 1073, I'll, I'll definitely engage it because it does add a little, oh, a little okay. tiny, tiny bit of color to it. But um, it's just to roll off. But I'd rather EQ for, and leave a lot more of that for the mixing. And you, right, and yeah. you Andrew? Uh, definitely the same concept. Um, because he does a great mix EQ, so <laughs> if I set up we a great a, vocal, it's really easy for him. Yeah. So, and I don't like to color something that's not there. Yeah, you know we usually saying? roll off maybe, maybe sixty and below, like eighty at the most, depending on what. The very vocal. rarely even eighty though, because at that point you may be losing some of your um, some of your bottom information. Usually, nothing below sixty you really want in a vocal. A lot of that is just uh, you know air conditioning, hum, and especially for people working in project studios. That's going to be a big thing. Is um, the garage I remember opening? When I first started, when I first moved out here, um, you know, years ago, I was working in a smaller studio that was right next to the 405, right next to the freeway, <laughs> and um, you could actually, if you really, really turned it up loud without the roll off, you could actually hear the freeway. Mm -hmm. and so things like that, um, you may need to roll off some of that, you know, lower garbage information, as I call it, just is there, down there. Is there ever a time when, like, say, maybe on a, a rock vocal, I, I remember one time I recorded James Brown, and, mm -hmm. and uh, is there ever a time when you would choose a condenser mic, I mean, a, a dynamic mic over a condenser mic? I know on James Brown we used an SM7, and that was the best mic for him. Um, in rock vocals, absolutely, because they're, they're really screaming into that mic, and they're really, you know, back to touching on what I was talking about earlier, where... Um, some vocalists can blow up some of the older vintage mics, you know, with, that have some more sensitive diaphragms. Um, so, you know, a dynamic mic would be perfect for that. Um, you know, we cut a lot of scratch vocals with dynamic mics uh, just because people can really scream and really get the idea and really feel what they're singing without having to worry about, oh, did I blow up the mic? Is it distorted? Like, um, and it's something with a rock vocal where you don't need as much of a round kind of, uh, you know, fat uh, yeah. sound. It can be, because, you know, in the end, it's going to be really compressed. It's going to be really up in your face. And it's all about that energy and that, you know, the, them just letting it all out into that mic. So a dynamic mic would be great for something like that. Is there ever a time where you guys would use two microphones on a vocal, one close, one farther away? I've done it before, just to get different tones. We've done it with, like, Celine Dion's done it. Um, there's several artists. I've done it with Mariah before. Just as with, she, Katie, with Katie, Katie we, we, we've done it we too. Did, we set up three or four microphones for auditioning purposes. Yeah, to see which Like, one, um, you know, we had her sing, um, you know, uh, us and then Kook, of course. We all had her sing into one microphone. And then we had her sing the same verse into another microphone. And then we just sort of went back and forth. And then, um, you know, 
Coop who, and Tricky, who were the producers, had the final say, of course, on which sound they liked the best. But we all kind of we set that up for auditioning purposes to figure out what the best mic for her would be, so we could get the best tone out of her for that. Well, guys, uh, I've learned myself. I've learned a lot today <laughs> talking with you great. guys. That's it's really been great. And sure. uh, um, what can we look for in the future? that you guys have done. I think we, we can look for a new Beyonce. New yeah, Beyonce. Um, um, we're starting with Leona Lewis, um, so we're, we're going to be working on some records with her. Um, so many people. Yeah, a lot of people. Uh, we're working the with Dream's a really great... Out with a new, yeah, new Dream's album. coming. And oh, also, oh, um, we're working with a really great band called uh, Semi-Precious Weapon that, uh, yeah, um, you know, yeah, Back to the Rock thing. Um, so that's going to be really fun. You know, they got some really... Fun unique vocals, yeah, unique, really unique sound, kind of like a pop, uh, punk type of thing. So that should be really exciting, and okay. you know, just keep it moving. All right, well, listen, I, I hope you appreciate. Uh, I certainly do. Uh, Andrew and B's time today. Thanks for having us, Dave. Oh, no trouble.